Hi friends, my name is Joseph Fleeter, and I was just recently asked with a very intriguing question, what are seven things you wish you could say to your seventh grade self? Number one, there's more. I think most seventh graders and people in that age group uh, have a very kind of limited view on what life is about. For them, most of their life and what their time is spent on is, is school, sports, video games, and friendships. And that's kind of their general worldview. And that's the kind of all they feel like they need. But I wish I could tell my seventh grade self that there's so much more. I think the, the way I see it is kind of like a bird in a cage. And, and there's like a big cage and it's full of a lot of different things, but there's actually an open door um, to a life beyond the cage. There's so much more that, that we haven't seen yet because we're stuck on what's familiar to us and what's easy for us. And so when we step outside of that cage into the more that there is, we see a whole new life. Number two, follow the leader. I had some friends recently uh, who went out on the streets and decided to go ask people, hey, would you give up everything you have and come follow me? And of course, it's funny, they, they took a camera with them and filmed all the responses and, and everyone's laughing at them and everyone's like, no, of course I'm not gonna follow you. Because it, it doesn't make sense for people to drop everything and follow a random stranger. And yet, that's exactly what we see happen in the Gospels. That there was something so captivating about Jesus that the people who saw him who encountered him dropped everything to follow him. And that same Jesus is waiting for you, seventh grade Joseph that he's waiting for you to just see him and drop everything and follow him because he is worth following. Number three, taking versus transforming. I think it's very easy to buy into the lie that when we begin to follow Jesus, he takes everything away from us. The truth of the matter is that he doesn't take it, but he transforms it. Right there are these fishermen and Jesus called them and he said, I'm gonna take you from fishermen to fishers of men. He took what they already had and he transformed it into something new. Jesus doesn't want to take you, seventh grade self, away from your sports, from your music, from the things that, that make your heart come alive. He just, wants to, he just wants to change the way you do them. He wants to change who you're doing it for. So it's not for yourself, but it's for a higher purpose. Number four, you can enter now. I love the story of the Israelites. After they escaped from Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, they had about a two weeks journey away from the promised land that they had been waiting for for so long. Two week journey. But what ended up happening is it took 40 years. 40 years for something that should have taken two weeks. Why? Because their hearts got distracted. Because they turned to false things to give them happiness. And so what was right there for them ended up taking them so long. And I think it's easy to buy into the lie as a, as a seventh grader that the faith is something far off. That this promised land, this life of abundance that Jesus promises is so far off. It's something that you'll turn to when you're older or, or when you have more time for it or, or just sometime in the distant future when Jesus is saying the promised land, you can enter it now. So why wait 40 years for what you can have right now today with your simple yes and your simple giving God your heart? Number five, you are not too young. I've had the awesome privilege to journey with thousands of middle schoolers over these last years. And I love seeing that when their hearts are touched by Jesus, they have this desire to do something with it, to go out and change something. And as a seventh grader, you are actually not too young to have an impact on the world around you. You are not too young to change the lives of the people around you. You're not too young to have a lasting impact and legacy on the world. There are, I've, I've seen so many seventh graders, middle school kids come back home and do so many amazing things. They'll go home and they'll, and they'll start groups with their friends. They'll go home and they'll change the way their sports team are on. They'll go home and, the, and they'll invest in their parish and their family and their school and they'll see things change. And you are not too young to do the same. You are not too young to have an impact on the people around you. All it takes is risk, to step out and risk and boldness and to not be afraid of what others think about you, to not be afraid of, of what the world may say, but if you have a passion, if you have a fire in your heart, go out and chase it and know that the world will be different because of it. Number six, faith is an adventure. Right? Like our faith is an adventure. It's something that's exciting. It's something that actually makes our hearts come alive. And we don't often see that for us. For you, seventh grade Joseph, faith seems to be kind of boring. Faith seems to be something that you kind of go through the motions with and doesn't have a lot of energy or excitement to it. But the truth is that, the, that Catholicism isn't boring. There's just a lot of boring Catholics. 
So don't be one. Enter into the adventure that faith is. Enter into the, the journey that it is. Enter into the joy and the love and the, and, and the passion and the excitement that you can have when you step into what faith actually is. And finally, number seven, habits form habitat. The habits that you begin to take up today will form the environment that you surround yourself with for the rest of your life. So start good habits now. Start praying every day. Start encouraging others. Start speaking life and, and, and get rid of the negative language that you use. Start entering into relationships. Start diving into the things that make your heart come alive. And you'll see how that affects the area around you. Because the, the, the environment that we cultivate within us will reproduce around us. So with your habits, start forming good ones now. And you'll see the lasting effects that has on you and on all those around you. This has been seven things that I wish I could tell my seventh grade self. Know that myself and so many others are praying for all you watching, that we've been through this, we were walking through it, that there is a life that's so much more. So step into it. He's waiting for you. And above all, know how truly and deeply God loves you. Thank you.